So if you've watched any of my content before, you'll know that I'm big on first principles thinking. I think as a entrepreneur, as a product manager, someone who's focused on your career, uh, thinking from first principles is just such an important thing. And while you can read books on it and you know follow certain frameworks, I've actually found a tool that I think is the best thing I've ever seen from trying to cultivate your kind of method and mental models for how to think from first principles. So the tool is called Fermi.fun. Uh, it's currently just on the wait list. Uh, but what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you uh, the kind of private beta that I'm part of. I'm gonna talk you through how it works and basically gonna take you through three examples of me working through this. So you can hopefully try and get better at first principles thinking yourself. So the tool is very, very simple. You put in any word here, you can see with things that I've um, played with before, and it's gonna give you a question on how to think about that through numbers. And then your job is literally just to try and answer the question. The important thing here is not to get the right answer, it's just to understand the best way to think about this from a numerical point of view and first principles. So let's take a look at how it's gonna work. Um, so I'm just trying to look for something here uh, that I like. So, uh, okay, I've got this thing. So I'm gonna go for wood um, and then Let's go, let's learn wood through numbers. Okay, how many trees are required to produce a cord of uh, firewood? Okay, so let's open up um, Whimsical. And this is how I like to think about things. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna list out things that I wanna know the answer to on a high level before diving them in. So the first one is, we're gonna go do this by weight, I think. So weight of a cord of firewood. I assume what it means here is like one of those little things you put in the fire. Um, and then weight of a tree. And then we've got something here to do with the utilization rate uh, of, the, of the wood. Okay, so the more difficult thing here is gonna be the weight of the tree. So let's start with that. Now we've got to make a few assumptions. Uh, I'm gonna go hardwood here because most good firewood is made from hardwood. Um, but equally you do have that plywoody stuff, but we're not gonna consider that. Um, so let's just say, and we can just list out our assumptions here. Um, it's hardwood and let's go with, let's say oak. Um, I don't know if you would really make firewood from oak, it seems like it might be actually too good of a wood, but um, for this purposes, it's, it's not that important, let's do it. Okay, so a tree, how are we gonna work out the weight of a tree? Um, so first, we need to find the area of the tree, uh, and then we need to know the, I would think about this in terms of the density of the wood. So we've got the area, and then if we combine that with the density, then we're gonna get the weight. Uh, okay, so area. How wide is an oak tree? I'm in my head picturing those massive ones that you like to see in parks. I doubt the farmed ones are that big. I reckon they're probably this big. Let's call it 500, uh, or 500 mil wide. So let's call it 50 centimeters wide. Um, so if we do Let's do this in meters, so uh, 50 centimeter, uh, sorry. Yeah, so half a meter, so we've got 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, because we're doing pi r squared here, so r squared would be 0 0.25, and then times that by 3.14. So let's say 0 0.785. Uh, I, I like writing things down, so let's just call it 0 0.75 as the, um, as the cross, cross surface area. How tall are these trees? Let's say it's 10 meters. Um, so we've got a tree of 7.5 uh, meters cubed because it's 0.75 meters squared wide. Um, well, meters, meters squared circumference and it's 10 meters tall. Uh, so we've got 7.5 meters cubed. Now this is the wet weight. So let's take, hmm. 
We're going to have to come up, make, make up a number here because I don't know what it is for the density of oak. Um, I'm going to say per meter cubed, like a full meter cubed. It's probably going to be like, let's say 500 uh, kilograms per meter cubed. So you've got 7.5 times um, 500. Uh, so 7.5 meters cubed at 500 kilograms per meters cubed. Sorry, I got rid of that. 7.5 times 500. So let's say that the tree weighs about 3.5 tons. Again, these are going to vary massively. Obviously, if you're using like a, a pine or like a, a you know something else, it's going to be it's going to be different. So um, yeah, that's how we've now come to the weight of a tree. But this is wet. Is the density wet? All dry it doesn't really matter but like if you were to show your working here you would think like okay that's a dry tree so let's take that down to say let's say it's 40 percent water so we've got 3.5 times 0.6 so actually dry weight is 2.1 okay happy with that i mean no idea if that's anywhere near right but happy with it um, now we need to do the weight of the cord of the firewood and we'll actually do this in the same way uh, with the same assumptions. So this is going to be square, it's not going to be circular, so it makes it a little bit simpler. So, and this is what you've got to do, you've got to take points of reference that you know, you can't just, you know, the whole point of this is you're not Googling everything. Like I'm not trying to Google the density. I'm not trying to Google how long a quarter firewood is. You're trying to infer from your own direct experience what is true and what is not. Uh, this is, you know, how you get better at thinking. This is, yeah, just epistemology uh, 101, to be honest. So let's say it's 50 uh, centimeters wide. Um, and then let's call it uh, 20. And let's say it's a cube. So it's, um, let's call it 15. 15, 15, 50. Uh, so that's 0 0.5 times 0 0.15 times 0 0.15. So it's 0 0.011 meters cubed. I don't mind using calculators for this. If you really wanted to do this hardcore or you like want to improve your mental maths, you can use your calculators. For me, I don't know, I'm not trying to like, improve my maths ability necessarily. I'm just trying to improve my thinking ability and they are different things in my opinion. Um, okay, so we've got that, and then we use the same uh, density, so 500 kilos per meters cubed, so 500 times 0 0.011, 5 kilos per, that does not sound right, uh, but then we've got to get the dry weight, so we've got to times it by 0 0.6, uh, Still, 2.5 kilograms, so it's around that for the uh, baton, just seems a bit heavy to me. It's, it's probably about right, actually. I'm just trying to, in my head, imagine it compared to those little dumbbells you get at the gym and putting fire in the, in the fireplace at my parents' house. It's probably not a million miles off. So, we've got the weight of the cord of the firewood. We don't need to get have this anymore, but... Mm, okay, yeah, this is, this is where it gets, uh, well, interesting. So we've got 2.1 tons of tree to make 2.5 kilos of firewood. Now that here's as a question of like, what is the utilization rate of the tree? If this was a table or something, it would be a bit different, but because these are so small, I actually think this utilization rate is gonna be exceptionally high. I think it's gonna be like 95%. Um, so we can just put that in at 95%. And then all we do here is we say, right, we've got 2,100 kilos uh, divided by 2.5 kilos uh, and then so that's 840 pieces but then we times that by 0 0.95 so we've got 700 so let's call it 800 pieces um, of wood because we basically just divided this by this and then multiplied it by the uh, by the, the rate there um, how many trees are okay so it's the inverse of this so it's one eighth one eight hundredth 0.00125. I actually don't know this term called a firewood, so I just want to make sure I've got that the right thing. 
Yeah, okay. These look massive, though. Ah. So it's the pre-split. Is that right? Oh, wow. The cord is actually a thing. Okay, it's not important what your interpretation is. It's about the... Um, it's going to be wrong because I didn't understand what this cord meant. But the, the, the thing is... Um, 14,000 trees. Okay, for, for me, this is good enough. This is interesting because the, 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 the thought process that it's taking me through is exactly the same as the thought process I just used. It's talking about finding the density, finding the height, it's done something completely different because I'm a dumb dumb and didn't know what a cord of firewood was, but apparently it's a standardized unit of measurement for stacked foot firewood that measures four feet high, four feet wide and eight feet long. Um, but the principle is exactly the same and that's what you want to be looking for. So I would consider this still a success because I've followed like a logical pattern that it seems to think is a good way to think about this problem. Obviously the answer I got was very different, uh, but still really interesting let's see if we can do another one and get closer to the proper answer okay let's do one more um okay books i'm gonna go books books all around me uh so let's learn books through numbers hopefully it's not how many bloody trees are required to make a book we've just done that one how many books are sold worldwide in a year okay uh right worldwide in a year so i'm wondering how to approach this there's two there's two ways in my head that you that you look at this um one is just simply demand so you just go for how many books are sold to the end consumer i.e someone like me buying it the thing is there's probably a lot of unsold books so I don't know if like just taking the number of books that are sold is gonna is gonna do that because people will like big bookshops will will get them. Um, also, you've got the secondhand book market. So I was thinking like you could go down books produced instead. It's gonna be difficult to know how many books are produced. I think the best way here is to go down books sold, and we just make an assumption that we are talking about the end user buying them um i.e not a wholesaler because a lot of wholesalers will buy and then kind of store them like how many books well maybe amazon's a bad example but like barnes and noble like how many books do they have just like sitting in their warehouses wouldn't technically class that as sold even though they have bought them from the publisher um so yeah these are like some of the uh some of the assumptions that we're going to make so this kind of a problem I'm going to approach it by looking at what I know on an individual level and then comparing that to to kind of a, like a broader level of society. Another fun another thing here I'm also going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm either going to make a choice to include ebooks or not include them. Now again, it's not doesn't matter. The point here is like you just want to really rigorously think about it, like not just be like just take books on face value. Like there's a number of edge cases here uh, that you have to consider. So like ebooks, uh, we will consider that, but we're not going to consider things like uh, like PDFs. Like how many you know creators are like giving away a PDF or like big businesses are like oh download my PDF for a for um, an email address or something like this. So we're not going to consider PDFs. We will consider eBooks. Um, we're not considering wholesalers. We're just considering the end user. Um, and this is a really good way to start the problems, by the way. Like we didn't really do it too much on the last one, but listing out your assumptions. Um, what else could we think about here? I guess you've got like academic stuff, but. No, I think this is like for now, we can add assumptions as we go, but for now this is this is okay. So I'm going to start with the population of the world. It's never a bad place to start when making these kinds of things. 
So we've got 8 billion. Now, maybe one thing here we could actually do is just say how many of the world is literate, like how many people can actually read. Often you kind of want to go further down the rabbit hole, but just you want to discount people immediately. I've no idea, but I wouldn't be surprised if the, it's about three quarters of the population around that that can read. Um, so let's say six billion people can actually read. That might even be high because you've also got very young kids that can't read. Ah, okay, so books. Do we count children's books? Yeah, let's count, let's count children's books. Um, children's, good job I can spell. Fuck me, okay, there we go. Um, okay, so we've got six billion uh, that can read or our children that would want books. Hmm. Do people who aren't, do illiterate adults get picture books? I don't think so. Maybe like comics. We won't count comics. They are not books. But you see what I mean? This problem gets like quite involved. Uh, okay, so we've got six billion. Um, then from here, I, I like to think of things in like a, either a normal distribution or a power law. So I can't draw on here, but you know what I mean? Like a, um, oh, can I, what's this? Okay, so like you've got a normal distribution, which works for a lot of things. Um, well, actually it doesn't work for anything. Sorry, ignore what I said. This works for like height and pretty much nothing else. Um, and then you've got a power law, which is where kind of like the top, like, you know, 80% of people are taking like nearly everything and then the bottom is done by nothing. So this works for things in the natural world, sometimes, but not always. Power laws are generally like, just a far better model to view the world uh, when, you're, when you're thinking about these. And this is another thing that you wanna be collecting, like these little graphs and models to think about stuff. So why is this relevant about the power law? Well, let's remove the normal for now. Because when we think about these six billion people, I would bet that I think almost nobody reads, if I'm honest. I think I'm one of the few people that reads a lot. I, I just don't think it happens. So I think like a very small portion of these people are gonna be buying most of the books. Um, so even if you've got 6 billion people on the planet who can read, again, I'm just taking a wild guess, but I think like probably, probably like 3 billion people, I don't think buy a single book a year. Um, obviously there's, you know, a lot of reasons for this. Some people it's generally like cost constraints. Uh, you know, if you're living in, in the global South, like being able to afford a book is a luxury, um, for a lot of people, but I think a lot of people just don't like reading and um, that's fine. Like that's their prerogative. So let's say like of this 3 billion people, 3 billion, 6 billion people, only half are actually reading even one book a year or buying one book a year. Um, so let's call that 3 billion. And then I think from this like 3 billion, probably like 2.5 billion are buying something like one book a year. Um, so we'll say that these are buying one book. And then we've got half a billion that are kind of more serious readers. So we've got 500 million of those, I would say, let's say 100 million are like me and are buying kind of like maybe 20 books a year. And then you've got 400 million who are buying maybe like five books a year. Okay, so now we can just um, now we can just put all this together. Okay, so now we can just put all this together. So we've got 100 million times 20. Uh, I shouldn't need the calculator for this. So that's two uh, two billion from the power users. Then from the rest of them, uh, so it's four times, it's actually the same. This is four times and this is four times. So that's another two billion. And then from here, you've got 2.5 billion. And then, yeah, that's it. So it's two plus two plus 2.5. So that's 4.5 billion books sold uh, per year. Um, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of how I thought about it. No idea if this is right. Seems actually quite high. That's like nearly one book per person, which from my point of view makes sense because like I live in a, you know, a very developed, like rich country in England. But 
I'm imagining this would not make sense uh, for many, many people in the world. But okay, let's say 6.5 billion. Uh, I cannot do big numbers. Like I always make mistakes with them, so. So let's put that in. Okay, so it's doing the same as me. It's starting with a global population, average books read per year, literacy rates. Okay, it talks about literacy rates. Okay, let's assume an average of three books per person per year by multiplayer in the global. Okay, 23. However, not or purchase brand new. Some people borrow books from libraries. Yeah. So I kind of made that assumption implicitly by saying that we're only going to talk about books that have been bought. Um, I didn't think about the libraries thing actually. Okay, so this is like in my assumptions here. Uh, I should have definitely here assumed, we kind of did because we uh, implicitly in my head, I was like books sold, that doesn't count library, but we should have listed that as an assumption for sure. Um, so it's certainly 70% of the books are purchased new, worldwide purchase, so that's uh, 16 billion. Okay, so it's obviously a lot higher than what I put in, like three times higher, but it's not, with these, I'm like wondering, am I like an order of magnitude off or not? So you want to be within like one order of like the same order of magnitude, which I am here. Also, this is not the right answer. Like this is just what they're what they're spitting out. So what we can do is um, how many books sold uh, per year? Okay, so in the UK, um, okay, two point two billion, which is close to me. Um, but again, like, you know, this that's gonna have its own assumptions and stuff like that. The number is not the important thing. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, what the important thing is, is, um, is yeah, coming to an answer. And this tool really helps you to like, think about, oh, you know, we, we could have done something completely wrong and missed a big assumption, like to be honest, the library's one. Uh, and it's really good in helping you, uh, helping you facilitate that. So thanks a lot. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, very different to my normal videos, but I think really interesting in terms of how we can think about uh, you know, all of this stuff from first principles. If you liked it, hit subscribe. I'm also going to be doing more videos on kind of mental models and how to improve your thinking. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot for sticking around and enjoy the rest of your day.